Hi, good morning, everyone. Can you hear me now? Good. All right. Uh, welcome, everyone. Thanks for joining us today, webinar. My name is Eric Ng from Malaysia Red Crescent Society, Penang State. All right. Today, uh, we are presenting CPR and AD Education in Japan Community, presented by our professor, Dr. Satoshi Takeda from the uh, Jaike University in Tokyo, Japan. All right, uh, just for your information, uh, our admin will mute all the participant mic, but later on during question and answer session, uh, admin will unmute so that uh, you can ask the question to the uh, our speaker professor today. All right, now uh, without further ado, we would like to turn the time over to Professor Satoshi, then uh, our presenter today, let me introduce our professor, all right. Uh, professor Dr. Satoshi Takeda is from the JIK University School of Medicine, Tokyo in Japan, where he is a lecturer in the uh, emergency uh, medicine. And professor are also very, uh, what we call, interest in the uh, simulation teaching purposes. So uh, later on, you may ask professor regarding the uh, training session, how he, uh, he do it in Japan and so on. And Professor also very active. Right? He's a member of Japanese Emergency and Cardiovascular Care uh, Science Committee, Resuscitation Science Committee in Japan Society, and the Instructional System in Healthcare. And pro Professor has been published a uh, number of papers uh, in the conference and also published in several research articles and journals. For example, publication like Aiming for Zero Date, Prevent of Sudden Cardiac Arrest in School, yeah, uh, these are the statements from the AED Committee of Japan Circulation Society. All right, uh, let us welcome our professor today. Professor, now it's your turn. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Uh, hi, my friend in Malaysia. Uh, not only Malaysia, I'm not sure. But uh, thank you very much this kind of the opportunity to present um, our Japanese data um to my friend in Malaysia. I'm very excited and exciting and I'm so happy to be with you. And the, I'd like to start my presentation. Yeah, please. Please wait. Can I share? Yeah, please. Yeah, we can see now. Okay. This is uh, last February. Um, our university and uh, I went to Diamond Princess cruise ship in Yokohama. And the, our, our fight with COVID-19 was started from this point. And I know you are now facing very hard time in Malaysia, especially in Kuala Lumpur. And I'm so sad about that. But, uh, we, uh, but I think in this one year, um, we learned a lot. And to avoid three C's, the crowded, the cross contact, the uh, this kind of the things is very important. And the other important things is uh, coming vaccination. And the hopefully in Malaysia also, um, we expect the effect of the vaccine and the still these three, avoid three C's can help uh, your situation. This is American Heart Association. Uh, so, sorry, I already, this is uh, translated in Japanese, but it, this is American Heart Association recommended bystander CPR or bystander AED method in this kind of the COVID era. Step one, call 911, 119 in Japan. I'm not sure in Malaysia, but the, uh, step two is wearing mask, not only you, but also patient. Number three, compression only CPR, and number four, step four, AED. So this is a very um, simple message. And the, 
Uh, we are talking about this kind of the Tokyo Olympic preparation with Eric before this um, webinar. Uh, we are uh, preparing Tokyo Olympic 2020 or Tokyo Paralympic 2020. Um, I'm not sure right now, but it, um, if the actually we will have, that will start end of July. And the, that is already only one month to do the preparation. And the, I'm a, one of the um, member of preparation for staff, not only medical staff, but also volunteer staff, CPR training. And we are doing this kind of the um, training in community. And this is a brand new AED in Japan. This is the AED uh, Nihon Koden one. This is especially for Tokyo Olympic, I think. I'm not sure, <laughs> but I think, because you can see very small and very light and very um, easy to carry. And this kind of the um, AED is already start to um, spread. So this kind of these things is going on. Okay, and today I'd like to talk about four things. First, I'd like to a little bit talk about sudden cardiac arrest um, real data in Japan. And second, I'd like to uh, mention about CPR and the AD training in Japan. Third, good news from Japan. And the fourth, ongoing and future trial to save more lives. So I'd like to start first one, sudden cardiac arrest uh, data in Japan. And this is sudden cardiac death case in Japan. Uh, this is uh, 2002, 2002, uh, November. Uh, one of the other famous princess, uh, Takamado no Miya, died during squash play in Canadian embassy in Tokyo. This is so sad news, but he, in this 2002, uh, in, even in Tokyo, we don't have any public access AED in this time. If there is, there, there was AED, we, can, we could save his life. So sad news. But he, after two, two years after this, 2004, uh, Japanese government allow us to spread AED in Japan. That is the starting time of a public access defibrillation program in Japan, in Tokyo. This is a number uh, of sudden cardiac arrest, especially witness sudden cardiac arrest. And the light, light gray line is the witness sudden cardiac arrest number and the dark bar is uh, bystander CPR number. So our most recent one is this one. Uh, this is a, a two years ago and the 25,000 people were uh, have a witness cardiac arrest. In that uh, 15,000 um, received bystander CPR. That is almost 60% of witness sudden cardiac arrest. That is uh, okay. Um, year by year, bystander CPR rate was increasing to 60. And the, but this is a um, neurological good, neurologically good um, survive, how can I say? Um, um, uh, survival, survival rate. And the, of course, year by year, survival rate was increasing, but the, right now in Japan, not only Tokyo, but also all, all over Japan, uh, survival rate after one month, um, um, this is neurological good survival rate was only 9%. I think this kind of the number is very similar not only in Japan, but also your country also very similar, I think. 
This is the number of AED in Japan. Sorry, in Japanese. Uh, this is uh, Dr. Sakamoto in Tokyo University, a professor, uh, reported this data several years ago. Um, surprisingly, in Japan, uh, all over Japan, we have half millions of AEDs in Japan. That is a very successful number. And the, you know, AED is very expensive. So half millions of AED is quite lots uh, all over Japan. And the, this is a number of bystander AED, bystander defibrillation rate. And the, this is the most recent one. And uh, uh, 1,300 uh, defibrillation was uh, done by bystander in 25,000 witness cardiac arrest. That is good because uh, year by year going up. But it, this left graph is demonstrating the detail things. In Japan, um, almost seven, 78,000 uh, cardiac origin, sudden cardiac arrest. Um, of course, in home or in washroom or bathroom, sometimes it's very difficult to save their lives because uh, no witness. But uh, this witness, this is witness in front of somebody and somebody is seeing the um, falling down. This is a witness cardiac arrest is 25,000. This 25,000, there is a big chance of to save these people's life, right? So we are focusing this 25,000. In 20, this 25,000, as I already showed, uh, almost 15,000, 60% bystander CPR, but it, only AED usage or AED shocked case is as I already showed, uh, 1,300. In this 25,000, 1,300. This is only 5% of witness cardiac arrest uh, using AD shocked. So this 5% is quite low. Of course, this number is going up as a right graph, but it, this means 95% of witness arrest didn't shocked by AED. So this is our challenge in Japan, how to use um, already expanded half millions AED effectively in this kind of the uh, sudden cardiac arrest situation. So I already talked about Eric before this webinar, but he, in Malaysia, you start to expand AED after this. Uh, in that period, you have to think about how to effectively um, place the AED or how to effectively use expensive AED in each area. This is very sad story. Um, this is already 10 years ago. In Saitama Prefecture next to Tokyo, uh, elementary school, sixth grade elementary school students suddenly collapsed after running. In school, they have AED. The teacher knows how to do CPR, but due to gasping, uh, agonal breathing, teacher recognize she's she have a pulse and she have a breathing and they didn't do any CPR and they didn't use AED. That, that school has AED, but it didn't use and he died. This is a very sad story. And we made some kind of the message video for this. So I a little bit explain about this. Please wait. If you
Okay, this is the uh, AED Foundation in Japan page. And we have a stop sudden cardiac arrest project right now. And this is Japanese video, but I think you can, you can know. So I'll share this. So sorry, one more time. I share the sound. Sorry, please wait. No problem, take your time, Prof. Okay. Sorry. Sorry, I'd like to share the screen with sound. Okay. This is a five minute video, movie. Can you listen to the sound? Yes, yes. Thank you. Yeah, clear. Thanks. But he didn't use it. EMT alive after 11 minutes after collapse. Happened and gasping, a corner grief was one of the errors in the case. <laughs> you 
you know, every one minute, survival rate is going down 私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、
uh, green line uh, survival rate is uh, nothing. No CPR, no AED in Japan. And the CPR only is blue line, much better than nothing, but it's still low. And the CPR AED is the red line. And the, in this data, the number is not so big, but the survival rate is almost 50%. So this is quite clear that importance of bystander CPR and bystander AED. So I will move on to the CPR and AED training in Japan. And this is the AED foundation I'm involved. And we are doing this kind of the cartoon, um, how can I say, a cartoon um, so animation CPR program. A little bit show the this video. We called push pro project. Okay, uh, this is uh, what we are doing. This is a push project and the, this kind of the, um, this is a gymnastics and the, this is uh, what we are do using. It's kind of the small material to train the CPR and each student have this kind of the material. Uh, usually in Japanese fire department um, using big mannequin as you are using, but it, um, that kind of the style, uh, one, money, one, one mannequin for 10 students or sometime um, more than that. So compression time to train is limited. So we spread this kind of the small run, one by one, one, one this, small training material to one student. So much more, how can I say, hands-on time. And the, what we are doing is like this. The video, animation video is like this. I'll share. How to perform chest compressions. Now I'll explain how to perform chest compressions. All right. The medical drama saved John's life. Why is that playing the leading role? <coughs> oh no! Somebody has fallen down! What happened? Anyway, first off, uh, check the scene and make sure it's safe for you and the victim. Hey! Get up your courage and talk to the person. Are you okay? Please, say something. This way, if the victim doesn't respond at all, it's a sign he's under a life-threatening condition. Call 119 and bring an AED, please! Call 119 and bring an AED, please! You must ask for help in a loud voice and have someone like a bystander get you an AED. Everyone, let's try together. So this kind of the um, animation um, sometimes very useful to do the CPR training, especially for uh, elementary school or parents or uh, that kind of the situation. So sometimes we are using this kind of the um, material in push project. And the, this is my Facebook page. And the, I'm bringing that kind of the material or video to the elementary school or junior high school or senior high school. And the, not only students, but also teachers. 
uh, we are try to spread. And the teacher can teach, sometimes teach the student. So that kind of the things is very important. This is our university and the nursing, medical students and nursing students, first year medical and nursing students, 180 person. We do this kind of the CPL. This is a remote because uh, this year and last year, we have very hard time, quite similar with your right now condition. And uh, we cannot gather even in gymnastics. So we use satellite uh, CPL using this kind of the push project. I'll show you the video. So this um, imagine physician is using a pillow, not mannequin. This lady, this girl lady is using uh, rare dial QCPL CPL, but it, it's okay. It, anything is okay. Pillow or sometime uh, cushion or sometime we are using tennis ball and the especially COVID-19 era uh, when we not we could not gather we are using this kind of thing. It's, 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 it's rare now. It's a way of protection. <laughs> Green one is very nice CPR. And if the speed is low, um, the speed or well, speed is high, the uh, indicator so too hard, too fast or too slow. That this is the, each student is in their own home, but it, we can recognize from university and the, each individual can do the adequate speed CPR or not. And the, this is the alternative method. If the, this kind of the mannequin is nothing, uh, we are using this kind of the tennis ball. And the, we spread this kind of the AED seat or this kind of the mannequin seat, not mannequin, only paper. And they put the tennis ball here and they do the satellite CPR training. And the, our target is school and the sports area. Because school in Japan, 95% of school sudden cardiac arrest is witnessed. So 95% is a very big portion. So we can save the life in school. So school is one of the, our targets. And the, one of the strategy we'd like to spread is the textbook in elementary school or junior high school. And the, this is mass textbook, a uh, math textbook and the um, survival rate using 80, 10% every minute, 10% decrease, right? So th this is math tech. And the, this is um, um, gym uh, text and the, this kind of the survival or CPL stories is described. And the other target is the sports area. Sports area also a very very big portion of uh, sudden cardiac arrest is witnessed, and we are making uh, imagine action plan. I'm so sorry, this is in uh, Japanese. And the preparation for AED or material or emergent uh, CPR or AED placement or ambulance, how to um, gather the ambulance or hospital information. This is our emergency action plan. This kind of things is doing in Japan. So sad, I'd like to show the good news from Japan. This is the uh, um, um, soccer ball was hit his chest and suddenly collapsed. This is, uh, we, we have a real uh, movie, this. So I will show the movie. He's a professional futsal player. In Japanese. Ogata Renkyu Chunyo Konareta, Aru, Futosaru no Shiaide, Tosana Handanga, Inochio, Squimasta. Kunoezo, Gamen no Chuo, Nichu no Kuste Kudasai. Oh, Kitabolunga, Sensu no Karada, Chukuneki. 
一旦立ち上がりますが倒れ込んでしまいました心臓が止まってしまったのですしかしこの後周りに居合わせた人の判断で AED を使った救命処置が行われ選手は一命を取り留めました倒れた田中さんのもとに駆け救急車もお願いしますもう確認したんですけど不安でしたがなかったのかな5年の、えー、フットサルの民間の全国大会の試合中に、えー、心肺停止になりました、えー、相手の She is no disease about heart disease. Only the hitting check was the only cause of his sudden cardiac arrest. So, if there is AED, we can save their, his life, but he, nothing is sometimes very hard to do, right? And this is the other story of、uh, baseball. This is a little bit old story. To 2007 in Osaka, Japan. And we have a big、uh, baseball,、uh, a senior high school baseball tournament every summer in Osaka area. And he, he was the pitcher, but he hit his chest by ball and suddenly、um, collapsed. And he, we can have his AED data. So I will show you the AED data, actual AED data. A D said shock advice. And right now, P sound that is already、um, charged. And the only things we, he, they have to do is pushing the shock button. But he, nobody is pushing button because it's so crowded and so jammed. And he, no, one can, no one could push the button in first time. You know,、uh, In this case, I said, I'm n o AD will re、uh, analyze. So, two minutes after, this is a second analysis. So, this comes down and the sound is pretty much hearing the AD sound. Okay, the, this is a story, and he,、um, and he, he's now, of course,、um, he saved his life. And he,、um, he, in this time, he said he'd like to be an EMT or a paramedic. But he, right now, I heard that he's now not EMT or a paramedic, but he, he's selling AED in Japan. I think that's a good job, right? <laughs> because this, is, this, can, this can save your life, because、uh, I saved by this AED. So I think this is a nice person for AED. And then the other story is this this is a Japanese very famous comedian. Uh, Mr. Matsumura. 
and uh, he was suddenly collapsed during Tokyo Marathon 2009. Tokyo Marathon is one of the most uh, safe uh, marathon all over the world. Uh, right now, uh, um, Tokyo Marathon have a 14th hist uh, history, 14th year history uh, right now, and the 11, but 11 marathon runner became the sudden cardiac arrest, but the all 11 was survived. So rescued by AED. So that is very nice news. And the, this um, data is already published in um, two, three years ago, 21.8 New England Journal of Medicine. Uh, you can check. This is a mobile automated external defibrillator response system during road race. This is not only Tokyo Marathon, but also including the other Japanese marathon race. And this is very surprising data. I will show you. Um, 28 sudden cardiac arrest during uh, runner with witness cardiac arrest. And in that bottom one, 28 is CPC one or two is very good neurological outcome survival. So 20 in 28, all 28 was survived, survived with a very good neurological outcome. This is very surprising and very wonderful or very good information. And not only for us, but also for you or for everybody because of witness arrest. And we can do bystander CPR and the bystander AED immediately. We can save the important rights, right? And the, the other information in here is this second circle. Gasping. Okay, so in 28 case of sudden cardiac arrest, 25, almost 90% victim demonstrate gasping, amonal breathing. So there is many paper, 30% gasping or 40% of sudden cardiac arrest gasping or 50%, but in this paper, 90% have gasping. Something like um, Askasan, uh, I already show you. So that means uh, gasping is just after crops. So we can save their life. Okay, so finally, I'd like to go in, on to the last session, ongoing and the future trial to save more lives. And the, we are making this kind of the um, gaming. Okay. Okay, so this is uh, uh, in this uh, page, we can go into the here. You know, onsen, right? In Japan, onsen is very famous, and we are making this kind of the learning game. There's the same question.私、私高校3年生、幼なじみで探偵部部長のエイドと超人気旅館にやってきた。そこには新土仏という古くから伝わる伝説があった。でも、まさかあんなことが起こるなんて。Somebody is trapped in the hotel. You can. Oh, I'm sorry.
Don't touch. They said. Find the situation. Don't touch. Somebody said. Is it okay? Don't touch. To save his life. Question number one. Take the next one, but don't touch. Okay. So, take the next one. Okay, so this kind of the um, gaming is one of one of the um, our strategy right now we are using, and the U, um, United Kingdom UK Resuscitation Council is uh, using uh, um, VR this kind of the training material using a virtual reality one. And the, that is uh, also very nice one. But the, we are doing this kind of the things also. And the other things I'd like to introduce you is, uh, this is a mobile phone dispatch of lay person PCPL in out of hospital cardiac arrest. And the, this kind of the um, uh, mobile phone, um, device can, how can I say, share the information where sudden cardiac, where or who sudden cardiac arrest happened. And the, in our university is using my SOS system or AED foundation is using, using AED goal. And the AED foundation is using this kind of the things right now. And the AED mapping is also very important. And the, uh, Malaysia, I'm not sure how, how many right now in Malaysia, but it, um, right now in Japan, as I said, half millions of AED, but it, we don't know detail location or five years or seven years, battery was gone. So we have to replace the AED, but it, we don't know which AED was already replaced and which one is not yet. So that is right now very big problem in Japan. So. In your country, if um, before uh, initiating the big number of AED control, uh, you can how can I say manage the system, make the system. It's very big difference, I think. So I will really show you the video. This is the pulse point. You know pulse point. Uh, this is the United States system, Pulse Point and Pulse Point AED. And the Pulse Point, I'll show you. Mm. Not moving. I'm so sorry, internet speed is not good. It's okay, no worries. Okay, I'll try again. Nope. Okay, so please check by yourself because uh, this is first point is uh, uh, like a mobile phone uh, apply system by using the smartphone. And the AED, Pulse Point AED is AED mapping in United States. This is not, so sorry. Um, but the, um, if we we'll take a photo of AED and upload it, and the, we can make the AED maps in each area. And this is very nice, not only us, but also um, it's very nice for students or uh, junior high school students or senior high school students, or uh, it's very good to recognize what 
Where is the most closest AED from your house or your school or your company? This kind of the information is very important. Sorry, moving. Okay, I'll move back to this slide. And this is a AD mapping right now. We are using AD Navi navigation. And the body is still uh, 50,000 AED. Uh, we have a uh, half million of AED. So it means one tenth only um, mapped. So still 90% of AED is not mapped yet. And the, each fire department sometimes have um, AED information. So we have to gather that kind of information. And the other uh, big challenge is the uh, AD drone. So drone is uh, uh, right now wide spreading, right? And the, in Tokyo area, the drone is prohibited in crowded area. I think Kuala Lumpur also, because there's uh, so many high buildings, but in rural area, sometimes this kind of the idea uh, have uh, some kind of the, um, a good um, method to save more life. Okay, so today I a little bit show about these kind of the things. And the, our university, Jikri University, is located just beside Tokyo Tower. And the, my university is the most closest university hospital from Tokyo Station or Haneda Station, Haneda Airport. I'm not sure Haneda Airport. Toho University is much closer, but it, uh, our university is very close from Tokyo Station. So if you have a chance to come into Tokyo, please visit our GK University, and I can take you to the Tokyo Tower. Uh, this, is our, this is our university. Just beside our university, there's the Toranomon Hills, mm -hmm. Atom Green Hills, and many uh, tall buildings. So next time you'll be in Tokyo, please come to our university. Uh, thank you very much for this kind of the opportunity. And the, um, today is a little bit widespread story in Japan. So I'm not sure this kind of the story or this kind of the talk can help your situation in Malaysia. But uh, I think um, in Japanese education in Japanese community, not only CPR, but also AED, uh, we have a good point, but uh, not only good point, but uh, we have a bad point, like 90% of witness arrest. We couldn't, we are now not using AED shock, or that kind of the things. You can use that kind of the information to recover or uh, improve the system in your country's system. So please uh, collaborate with each other. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor, for your sharing. Uh, we will go ahead about uh, one or two questions. Uh, participant, if there are any question would like to ask professor, then maybe you can uh, ask right now. Mr. Lim, admin, please unmute the mic if anyone would like to ask. Okay, I have a one question, Prof. Uh, regarding the uh, World Restart Hard Day, just now that you're sharing the uh, what I call CPR, right? The application that you are using is the uh, Anywhere apps from Ladder. All right. Yes. Any, any, anywhere, anywhere application in uh, Laredal Medical. I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. And uh, that is a very nice application. And the satellite, in, uh, even from satellite, we can um, do the, how can, how can I say, uh, objective. Uh, evaluation and the other story of what we are doing is I already talked a little bit about the Eric before this webinar. Uh, this is the 2019 World Restart Hard Day in Japan. This is the GK University and the Tokyo um, Medical uh, Tokyo um, some some office, and the, we uh, invite ambassador or uh, embassy staff in Tokyo area, and we do the CPR training for them because the world restart a hard day. So we did this kind of the things. This is a report for ERC guideline 2021, 
uh, Antwerp, Belgium. So yeah, and the, this is uh, what I show you, our yeah. university's program. And the, this one also reported into the station ERC guideline 2021 meeting. All right, thank you, Pro. Our participant audience, if you have any question, please uh, feel free to ask right now. You can unmute uh, the mic by yourself. Any question from the audience? Uh, Professor Takeda, uh, can you hear me? Yes, of course. All right, uh, yeah, uh, Professor Takeda, I have a few questions about uh, like the uh, like the question like I I like that is there any like barriers like for the Japanese resident to perform CPR on random strangers? Like the Japanese resident might feel like not confident on their own skill and worry of course. Is there like some sort like similar barrier for the Japanese resident to perform CPR? So you mean the, how confident about the CPR? Uh, it's like, what's, what's the, uh, the resident when they are doing the CPR like? Yeah. Mm. Sorry, uh, I can fully understand. Uh, um, how confident to do the CPR or resident? Yeah. It? yeah, it's like a uh, like bystander, right? Like the public, like how, like what's the barrier for the public to perform okay. CPR? Okay, understand. Um, right now, COVID era, mm -hmm. of course, um, the infection, uh, worry about the infection is one of the barrier. But before COVID era, I'm not sure right now, but, but um, I think many person, not only Japan, but also Malaysia or all over the world, um, even they are uh, trained once or second time or uh, several times, I think in front of them, somebody collapsed. The, they should be afraid or uh, somebody, um, they cannot, how can I say, forget about how to do CPR or that kind of the thing. So I think um, it's very important to do the CPR training to do, to be able to do in actual stressed um, real CPA situation. And the, that kind of things is very important, and not only in Japan, but also Malaysia or all over the world. So in that sense, I, as I said, UK resuscitations, the VR, VR CPR training program is one of the methods because uh, VR training is very, seems to be very real. And the, in front of you, somebody is really collapsed. And the, if the, they are familiar with that kind of situation, that barrier can a little bit going down. Hopefully. Thank you very much for your question. But that is a very important question. Okay, thank you, Prof. Uh, there's another, which also from me as well, because I have uh, a few questions as well, which the another one is like, like does the Japan have like some sort of Samaritan law to protect the public when they are trying to perform the procedure to the strangers? That's my question. Thank you very much. Uh, in Japan, we don't have, and the, but the Japanese government already, um, how can I say, um, say that we don't have, but the, um, even that kind of the situation, if we will do to save, uh, how can I say, um, if we will do the CPR to save the kids or her life, uh, no one sue and um, that person, the person, or bystander CPR do the person. So government is already announced to that. Uh, right now, no law, Some good Samaritan law, but uh, we are still discussing about, somebody said we should have good Samaritan law, even in Japan, but uh, right now, no law, but uh, 
should be okay um, in right now situation. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Thank you, uh, Professor Takeda. And well, uh, there's uh, another which is: Is there any like uh, condition or requirement for a person to perform CPR for healthcare or healthcare or non-healthcare professionals? If there is a requirement, like which body of like a regulatory authority to recognize the for the CPR. Mm. One, 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 more, one more time, please. Oh, okay. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Uh, my question is that is there any like uh, condition or any uh, re requirement for a person to perform CPR for any healthcare or non healthcare professionals? Like if there, there is any requirement, so which of the regulatory uh, body to recognize the CPR? So you mean the some kind of the regulation, uh, they have to do the CPR training? Mm. No? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure about it. In, uh. in, United, in United States, uh, every nurse have to have a Every two years, they have to have a CPR training, right? That kind of regulation. In in Japan, we don't have that kind of regulation. Um, but the United States, you know, American Heart Association program. Every two years, every nurse have to have CPR training every two years, right? That kind of things. Ah, yeah, yeah. So uh, in Japan, we don't have any regulation right now, but the. Um, like, but it, for the patient safety viewpoint, um, each hospital um, try to do at least every two years or every three years to do the CPR training for every staff, but it actually not regulated right now. That oh. is big, yeah, one of the problem for us. Oh, okay, okay. Not uh, and. And, uh, and this is also the last one, last one from me. Yes. And for the Japanese life, for the EM, uh, for the emergent EMS personnel, are they following the a AHA for their CPR procedure or their own like Japanese uh, each, uh, self hospital guidelines to perform the CPR? Okay. Uh, in Japan, we have a Japan Research Station Council one part of the uh, Asian Research Station uh, 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 Council. And the, we are not following American Heart Association. We, some, some part of the training, uh, we are using American Heart Association program because American Heart Association program is so well, rec well how can I say, managed, well, well established program. So every time we are, um, following that kind of the very nice managed, uh, not only CPR, but also edu educational viewpoint, very nice designed program. So we are sometimes following American Heart Association program, but but in Japan, we have our own guideline, Japan Research Station Council guideline. So we are usually following Japan Research Station Council guideline. It means Japanese guideline we are following. Uh, not only training, but also real CPR training, but it almost same because uh, we are following uh, Irukoa Costa consensus of science all over the world. So almost same. Thank you very much for your question. Okay, uh, thank you, Professor Takeda, for your for your uh, talk about it. Thank you. Thank you. All right, maybe uh, we have one more question from uh, uh, from the participant, Rio. Yes, hello. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Professor Takeda, I have uh, one question. Uh, I'm joining in Yokohama City. I'm a member of Yokohama City Fire Corps First Aid Instructor. I'm uh, Alex, my friend. So um, some part, part, participant uh, asked me, when 
when you use the AD, how to back to the AD. Okay. That is big problem. You know, <laughs> that's a big <laughs> problem even in Japan. Yeah, and um, that is very important question. How to back the AD? Because uh, right now, I think I'm not sure in Yokohama, but uh, usually almost all the fire department, um, if yeah. after using a if the bystander used AED, fire department doesn't bring AED to hospital. AED stay in that site, right? No, yes. In Japan. But I'm not sure if the Malaysia, if the AED is not fully expanded, I think AED should be bring, well, but it, uh, EMS has a defibrillator, of course, um, in, even in Malaysia, um, AED was replaced to the manual defibrillator and the AED was stay in that um, company or school or the mm. site, right? But the problem is, uh, as Fukuda-san talked about, AED data, as I showed, and the and today I show the AD actual recorded data of a voice and the AD uh, ECG stripe. And that data has a very, very, very big meaning because to save his or her life because the ventricular fibrillation or PA or AC3 or that kind of the things is almost all recorded in that. So in Japan, uh, not only Yokohama, but also uh, not only Yokohama, Tokyo, but also all over Japan, we are facing how to collect the AD data or uh, insight to to share. But that is a very, very big challenge for us. And the, yeah. right now, Strikers, a company Strikers, brand new AED is they said cloud AED. If uh, strikers AD used that AD data is going to AD data going to crowd, and if um, from hospital we type the number or a model, we can get the uh, AD data from crowd. That kind of the system is already established in some company, but in not all. So after this, that is a big challenge for us how to. Um, manage the AD or AD data or that kind of things. That's a quick, is this a quick question, uh, answer for you? I'm, I'm not sure. Ah, yes, it's okay. Arigatou gozaimasu. Thank you very much. Arigatou All right. Uh, if any question from, last question from the participant, because it's too late already. If no, then I will end the session. Any from the audience? Eric, I think there's a question from the chat. Maybe you can check it out. Uh, all right. Eric, can you read the ABA, please? Thank you. Yeah, I think uh, it's coming from Tan Ji Chong, right? Um, so, Doctor, um, I mean, first and foremost, thanks for the information uh, shared, right? So, the question asked uh, from the chat room is actually for the public AEDs, right? Who will be responsible to take care or even maintain, right? Or even replacement of the AED itself? I think it's quite similar to the previous question. That is a very important question. And the, I think in Malaysia, uh, I'm not sure. I think Kuala Lumpur, uh, um, AD's number is going up, but the, especially rural area or various area, that's a big difference between um, each area. And the, your question is very important um, because the maintenance of AD is very important. Uh, as I already talked to you, um, almost battery is usually expired after five to seven years uh, after installation. And the, that kind of the check also, main, including ma that's maintenance, including that kind of the check is very um, big, uh, how can I say, effort for each area, right? And the, uh, in Japan, we have uh, two styles of AED setting. One style is sell the AED itself to company 
or private person or a school or um, anywhere who need AED? If so, their own company or person or school have to main, do the maintenance. The other option is the rental. And the, I think right now, more than half of Japanese AED is using this kind of rental system. If we're using rental system, rental company can uh, replace the expired part or battery will be expired, they will change or that kind of the, um, yeah, that, that, that kind of system. So two, so initially selling AED, but it, that is very big challenge for, as you said, maintenance. So recently much more um, rental AED. So in your country to expand the AED, this kind of the discussion also very important, which is better. Yeah, thank you very much. That is very nice uh, point and very nice, big, uh, important question. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Professor. So uh, basically just to update all the audience uh, in, in Malaysia, especially in Penang, uh, basically our AAD is owned by the owner. So usually the owner have to uh, take care of the maintenance, which is the AAD pair and the battery they have maintained. Same is go to the Red Crescent or Red Cross. If your district, you have your own AAD, make sure you go and check regularly in terms of battery and the pads and in terms of uh, internal regular training as well so that our members are more competent. So uh, just to update uh, everyone in Prof. In Malaysia, we have a Malaysia Res uh, Resuscitation Council or we call it NCOT, we call it National Resuscitation Council of Malaysia whereby uh, we have a rep in the uh, Asian Resuscitation Council, same with Japan. So uh, basically most of the uh, Ministry of Health in Malaysia, they are followed the uh, National Resuscitation Council of Malaysia, uh, recognized by Malaysia uh, Ministry of Health government. Uh, where else in the uh, Malaysia, like the higher institute education, like University Education Hospital, uh, and some of the uh, American Heart Association recognized the uh, faculty of CPR and uh, uh, ALS training center, they will be using AHA uh, syllabus of it. And for Red Crescent or Red Cross in Malaysia, currently we are following the American Heart Association guideline. And also uh, in our Malaysia, we do not have the uh, Samaritan law. So just to update all the trainer, Red Crescent member, don't be afraid to perform CPR and AD to save someone's life because your good view and good intention to saving life, you are not going to killing the person. So don't afraid that uh, in terms of uh, medical legal side on that. A good thing is, of course, you as a first sector, and we have to encourage more and more people to learn it, to get the certification so that you have to qualify as a first sector. All right. So uh, I think I, would, uh, I don't want to hold too long because now in Japan already 1.15 is the lunch time and professors all have a lot of conference and so on. So uh, I would like to take this opportunity to thank professor for sharing with all of our recreation member. Yeah, and thanks Rio to joining us from Japan. Uh, before that, uh, can we open up our cam so that we can have a group photo together? Uh, all the participants, you can open up the cam, then maybe you can have a group photo together with Pro Admin, Lim, Lim Shana, please uh, ready to uh, take some photo. Thank you. All right, everyone, please smile now. Ready? Okay, thank you, everyone. Thanks, Professor. Arigato gozaimasu.